Alrighty, welcome to part two, and let's get started. I'm gonna bring in the uh, MoGraph text objects to start with, and then we're going to need two of those guys, and then let's just group them into a null. And after that, let's take a look at what we have. Let's select both of them. Make sure align middle is on. So if you type something really long, it always stays centered. And let's just go for text one. Let's type cinema. And this one, let's go with tutorial. All right, let's label this one and label this two. Now that that's set up, we can click on this null object and add the expresso tag. And then we can also label this like uh, text animation or something, something like that. And we can jump on into the user data and add user data. So for this, let's start off with a group and again make our own group let's call it like uh, special options or um, text controls put the data inside of that and then we're going to want to select a string and just have a one line string not multi-line and uh, default will be right there what it says. I, you don't have to have one, but I'm going to just have cinema there. And for this, I'm going to have line one text. Okay, and then we can easily just delete this by uh, selecting it and then dragging. Maybe. Dragging. There, okay. You have to hold down control it makes a duplicate of it that will be the copy and all we need to do is change the name to line 2 text and change the default value to tutorial and click OK now we come up we got these two things oh we need to go back in left them animatable so click this little animatable button and we're all set. Now you can't animate it. Alright, now to jump into Expresso now we can drag this text animation layer in and what happens is we name this text control and if you click on this it's basically everything in here is the properties up here. So basic properties is everything in here comes up display color layer name etc etc and we call ours text control so you come all the way down here you click line one text and then you can click line two text fun stuff and then you're going to want to bring both of these objects into Expresso and you can click on this little blue, which is the input, and you can go to, in here, its object, and then text. So we can find it under object, and then go down to text. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. Text for both of them, and then just drag it, this little dot, from one to the other. And that's basically all you have to do. You're all set up for that. Now, to add some nodes into this, like I was saying in the first part, you want to make sure you have remarks in here so you remember what's going on where, or else things might get a little confusing. So I'm going to go into the comments area here and write text input. So I know if I come back to this, the text input controls are right here. All right. 
can move over and it's the same thing you can do is just copy this hold down control drag over so now we have the remarks here and we'll set up a different thing for the display for text object 2 so I'm going to delete the comment here and I'm going to write display settings for text object 2 okay and then we can drag over this text animation layer you don't have to you can just drag it in from right here if you want whatever so we have this um, text line one you can click on and get that away and now we just have text two now we can we're basically trying to say if someone just wants to have one line of text not to have this visible so if this is if there's nothing there text object two becomes invisible like that so to do that go back to the default there. To do that we can input a node from Expresso into logic because it's a logical thing. So you want to go to let's say compare. Okay so this in the settings here you can select from all these different types of options in this compare and a simple thing to do is you can hover over this dot and then the bottom here bottom left the window it says line to text string so if you go in here you know obviously it's not static text it's a string so that sets it up really easy so you know straight ahead that's what you need so let's drag that red one into this blue one to input one and then once you're in there you're going to want to change for input two zero so now we can add a new node and go to all the way across to result basically what result is is it just shows you what the result of the answer is so right now it's zero so if I go over and delete this tutorial it should go to 1, but it did not. So I think the problem is this is not supposed to be 0. Yeah. Yeah, basically, I got confused here. So obviously, if the string is blank, then this is blank, then it'll equal 1. But if it's not blank, it'll equal 0. So problem with the result is it doesn't update automatically so you might need to reattach it a few times to have it start to work again and also an easy thing to do is just drag along the timeline or select an object and it should reset I'll show you a tip later on how to get around that problem for now let's take away this tutorial and see if it updates we got one that's very good. So now that it's one, we want to input another node here. Obviously, this is going to be a logic one because if it's zero, then there's one. So if it's zero, we want it to be visible. And if it's one, we don't want it to be visible. So this can be a condition. And what condition does is basically input right here if it's zero it's going to be inputting whatever is on the uh, the other end of this is going to be coming on the out if it's one whatever is in here it's going to be coming on the out and you can input like as many of these as you want as you could possibly imagine so I've had like 20 inputs going on to an output so just to give you a heads up, you can add things on here, extra inputs. So what you want to do, take this, the output here, and bring it into the, to the uh, condition, to the switch. 
and then this is going to be going to the visibility of object 2. So we can just drag text object 2 in here and we're going to want to go to visibility which is under basic properties again basic properties obviously it's right here in basic and we want these two so visible in editor and visible in renderer let's just make that a little bigger so you can see it and then we'll attach these and we can disattach this result because we don't need that right now. And now our condition. So it's a little difficult right off the top here. This, these check marks, the street traffic lights, they're a little backwards. At least that's how I see it. So zero is completely green, I believe. Yep. So one, I believe, is off. And two, I believe, is just this um, default, the grayed out ones. So I'm going to change it to one, maybe two and one probably is the answer. Yeah, two and one. So two and one, and then now our text is nothing there. And now when there is something there, it's visible. So that wasn't too hard. And now we have this automatic thing that automatically turns that group off when there's no text there. So if you have like a giant uh, MoGraph object here that you like, uh, we, we don't need that on, you can just delete that and boom, you have no text there. And that is basically all you need to know for this part two. So we're uh, moving along nicely. Now the tip I was talking about, instead of using results in Expresso, a nice thing to do is come up to here and pull out a text spline, put the object text in the middle, and then bring this object in here. Select this blue guy, and we can go to text for the object properties, and then just right in here bring that right in there so the answer is one right away you don't it updates right away so you don't have to use results and you can render this out and it's not going to show up so it's perfect uh, exactly what uh, what the results should do but this works instantaneously and there's no problem so you can just try this out two is in there can't really tell because uh, we got text right on top of it, but it's there. So I'll just turn this off and might as well just tuck it in there just in case we use it later. And that's basically it for part two. We'll see you in part three.